Hi friends, I am Asavri and you are watching Ecoholics channel. Today is the very first day of our tutorial that is why I'll start with the very basics. Now the very basics are the problem of economizing or getting into the problem of economics. Now what is the problem of economizing? So let me elaborate. The problem of economizing can be referred to as the problem of efficient utilization of scarce resources to satisfy maximum number of wants. We all know that father of economics is Adam Smith. Adam Smith is known as the father of economics because he was an organizer of the economic thought. Basically, he compiled and abbreviated all the knowledge about economics which was then known as political economy and abbreviated into uh, something very simple, something very uh, concrete but simple economic thought. In his very book written and published in 1776 which was known famously as The Wealth of Nations. The full name of the book was An Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of Wealth of Nations. Wherein he put his own thoughts and also the thoughts of his predecessors. Which was very unique because that was done for the very first time. That is why Adam Smith is known to be the father of economics. Not because he was an originator, but because he was the organizer and editor and com a compiler. Now we move on to the definitions given by famous economists. We will not go by the whole of the definition as a statement, but I'll give you the conceptual idea of what the economists wanted to say with that definition. So firstly, we'll get the idea of Lionel Robbins, the economist, who gave the definition of scarcity. Basically, he uh, emphasized on the problem of scarcity, how the resources or the means are scarce uh, to satisfy the unlimited wants or the unlimited ends. So these ends are our wants and the means are the resources, either natural or man-made resources. Next we come on to the famous economist Paul A. Samuelson who gave his definition a very comprehensive ideology. Basically he said that of course what Robin said about scarcity was true and of course economics was a science of the study of human behavior with reference to scarce means and unlimited wants. However, it was also a problem of production and distribution of these whatever goods economy has produced uh, in a very efficient manner. So Paul A. Samuelson gave the idea of three central problems of economics. Now what are these central problems of economics? And why do we need to learn economics, not only as a subject, but, but as a vital topic um, in this global economy? So the very first problem or the very first central problem of economics is what to produce and how much to produce. The choice of what to produce and how much to produce is totally at the discretion of the effective demand in that particular economy how much the economy needs a kind of product or a commodity to be produced in a particular quantity would be decided by that economy itself the next question or the central problem number two is how to produce now how to produce means that there has to be a technique used for the production of the particular commodity that has been chosen in the first central problem now what is that technique so uh, if for example it is an economy where the labor is in surplus and you are not having that much of capital the economy is capital deficient so of course choosing uh, uh, choosing an, a capital intensive technology or a capital intensive method of production would be 
in vain and useless so of course we need to understand what kind of economy is existing in the system and according to that economy according to the uh, resources of that economy whether it's about capital whether it's about labor whether it's about skilled labor that is human resources we need to apply all those resources and factors to decide and to choose how to produce a particular commodity now the third and final pro central problem which Samuelson told was how to distribute as I already told you that Samuelson had focused on the production and distribution of the commodities so how to distribute or for whom to produce is the third central problem which is dealt in the distribution theory now uh, we all know that an economy has basically four factors or of production that is land labor capital and entrepreneur now you must have noticed that in our central problems the first and the second problem was a problem of choice we need to we needed to make a choice between either what to produce uh, sh should I produce rice or sugarcane in a given land or uh, say how to produce should I uh, use capital intensive technology or labor intensive technology so the problem of choice always deals with certain kind of trade-off because we need to sacrifice one thing in order to obtain some uh, some more units of the another another thing now the trade-off actually leads to the opportunity cost now what is exactly opportunity cost it's a very simple uh, it's a very simple concept so I'll just give you one very very simple example which I think we all as students would have faced in our lives not faced but yeah of course example arts commerce and science are the three streams from which I have to choose one so for example if I want to choose arts so there has to be some logic behind why I would like to choose arts okay there has to be some um, something that I have foreseen uh, which would be uh, benefiting to me in art stream uh, rather that in the science or the commerce stream now let's say that in in the com if I would have chosen the commerce stream then there were chances that uh, after my studies I would have availed a package of 10 lakh rupees and if I would have chosen science then then there would have been a probability say that uh, I would have got the package of 15 lakh rupees now I have chosen arts so what is the next best alternative that I have sacrificed of course it is science why the probability of availing me a package of 15 lakh rupees which is the highest among all of the three arts for arts I don't know how much I'm going to avail because if for if for all three there there is a probability only but say because I know the probability of these two the next best alternative for gone would be science so that is the concept of opportunity cost now in this example of choosing streams 15 lakh rupees was the opportunity cost that I incurred while foregoing the science stream because I chose arts over science so in simple words opportunity cost means the next best alternative foregone or surrendered or given up basically I think that is clear and so we move on to the final topic of our tutorial that is positive economics and normative economics now what is positive economics and normative economics I know you must have heard about these two type of economics or these two words especially positive and normative but what exactly do they mean so let's understand first of all let's see what is positive economics 
Now, uh, Adam Smith and economists like Lionel Robbins followed the path of positive economics, which means what is. It deals with the problem which are more realistic in nature, which have a cause and effect relationship. For example, very simple, if we see chemistry, okay, now in chemistry, we know that uh, this much this much of solution uh, or this much of proportion of the solution would give me this particular result until and unless that much of uh, solution is not given uh, or that much of solution is not inserted in the test tube or in the flask that particular solution would not be reached so there is a cause and effect relationship. For a cause, there is an effect. Uh, normative economics was referred by economists like uh, Kaldor, Alfred Marshall, A.C. Pigou, uh, J.R. Hicks, Skitowski, etc. etc. So these, this was uh, the school of thought which believed in the normative economics. Now what normative economics is, it deals with the problem of what should be or how a problem should be solved, what ought to be. Now there's a lot of value judgment over here. For you, a problem can be solved in a particular manner. For me, it can be solved in a particular manner. So uh, I'd say that smoking is bad, but uh, maybe a friend of mine would say, no, the smoking, smoking is good. Smoking is not that injurious to health. Maybe tobacco eating is uh, bad for him. So these are the value judgments that are considered in the normative economics. It is based on ethics and value judgments, unlike to the positive economics, which is based on cause and effect relationship. Okay, so that is why normative economics is quite idealistic in nature, while a positive economics is realistic in nature. I think I have made myself pretty clear with the examples and of course the concept. Now I am that I sign off and meet you next time with more, more stuff and basic concepts of economics. Till then, keep calm and love economics. Bye bye.